Uh, first up, sleep quality and TMD, symptoms among young adults, a cross-sectional study. Uh, basically, if we go down to what they found in this research, there is a significant association between poor sleep quality and heightened temporomandibular disorder symptom severity in adults. Basically, like most other things in the human body or in most of the other musculoskeletal conditions in the human body, it's a multifactorial process where we have to take the whole person into consideration, not just focus in on the problem that the patient may be reporting, but as well as taking into account everything going on in their lives to figure out where to best address and take the first steps in managing whatever condition they come into the office with. So if you have TMD, just like if you have low back pain, we are going to be asking about where you are at uh, physically, mentally, socially, um, and anything else that we feel is going to play a part in exacerbating and or improving your condition. So with this one, obviously sleep evaluation is going to be huge. So if you're not getting a good night's sleep, we're going to try and tackle different ways to improve your night's sleep. Uh, in addition to doing any and all of the in-person, in-house therapy procedures that we have at hand, as well as rehab. So I like it because it really just shows off like everything else. This condition is multifactorial. Um, all the studies included demonstrated a decrease in pain intensity and improvement in the neuromuscular performance following resistance training, even if the superiority of resistance training over other interventions remains uncertain. Now, conclusion. Uh, clinicians managing patients with TMD should consider resistance training as an effective conservative option in conjunction with other treatment with other treatment modalities. Uh, while the steroid group showed superior pain relief and functional improvement at the two and six week mark, the stretching group demonstrated significantly better outcomes at the 12 and 16 week mark, favoring stretching for long term results, which is something we see for a lot of the other conditions that compare corticosteroids to others. However, you trade in a little bit for, um, you basically trade in a dollar for two later where that steroid is going to stop the process, which means if you don't dedicate some time to taking control of whatever got you in that situation that you needed the corticosteroid to begin with, once it wears off, you're no better or potentially even worse off because now you had um, that two to six weeks of relief that you were still not doing whatever it is your body didn't, you know, you didn't change habits that got you there. Too many people want to just think, hey, I got a steroid shot. I'm all good to do exactly what I was doing before without redressing and taking a look at my lifestyle factors, movements, diet, sleep, etc.